All right, so this is the next video where we're going to use the C47 calculator to do some complex number calculations. So I've preset the flags that I like to use with respect to how complex numbers are displayed. I created this custom menu, which I like. So if I just press triple, press the yellow three times, it comes back to the custom menu, which is where I was. And now I want to do, I want to add together three complex numbers. So the first complex number is in real imaginary format. And I'm just going to type it in. So 0 0.5 enter. That's the real part. 0 0.75 enter. That's the imaginary part. And now I can just press the F6 key, which is which assembles a complex number from the two numbers on the stack. And now it's displayed on the calculator in the same format that I have it written on my paper, which is what I really like about this mode. Now the second number, however, is in polar coordinates. It's got a magnitude of 1.5, so we put that on the stack. And then it's got an angle of 30 degrees. So we enter 30, but now we have to tell the calculator somehow that this is 30 degrees. It's not the imaginary number, it's actually an angle. And the F2 key will do that. It'll tag this number with degrees. And now when I press complex, it'll assemble this into a complex number, and it knows that I want magnitude and phase, and the phase is in degrees. And it shows me that, including the units, um, directly on the entry of the stack. Um, what I really like at this point now is that the first number I entered stayed in real and imaginary format because that's how I entered it. The second number is tagged with an angle and shows the units a degree, so I won't get confused about if it's degrees or radians or what. Um, so I really like those two features quite a bit. Now the third number I want to enter is in radians, and it's a calculation um, because it's pi over 4 radians. So first we enter the magnitude onto the stack, then I select pi. It's one key, key press for me and because I have a shortcut for it. And then four, divide. Now this number is in radians, and I want to tell the calculator that it's radians. So I do that with the F3 key. And then I can press complex, and it's assembled into a complex number um, in polar magnitude, a polar format with uh, the angle expressed in radians. Now that radian entry, pi over four, that's a rational number. I, I don't easily recognize that as pi over four. Um, so there is another way to display this, uh, and it's under the F4 key. If I select it, it'll change the angle to be multiples of pi radians. And now I can easily see that this is 2 at angle um, 0 0.25 pi radians. So I can recognize this easily as being um, pi over 4. So I have my three complex numbers entered on the stack. Now I can just add them together with the plus key, pressing it two times. And then I get this, uh, well, not very nice looking number, but uh, the both real and the angle, both the magnitude and the angle are irrational. Um, and the angle right now is in units of pi radians since that was my most recent entry. Now here I urge a little caution. You probably don't want pi radians if you're gonna write this down or use this um, uh, or you know, as an answer because it's rare for anyone to write down pi radians. So we can convert it back to radians just by pressing the F3 key. Now we have magnitude with an angle in radians. And if instead of radians I want degrees, I can just press the F2 key, and then I get the magnitude and the angle in degrees. And in each case, you can see that the angle is in degrees. There's no guessing what this, uh, what this result on the stack is, what format it's in, um, because it explicitly shows degrees or it shows radians. And if I want real and imaginary or rectangular format, then it shows real plus J imaginary. So it's very easy to convert this now to whatever format I want, noticing all the while that the calculator's uh, mode is not changing at all. It stays in rectangular mode in degrees um, because I'm explicitly telling it what to do for each step. It doesn't, I don't need to change the calculator mode. So the next thing I can do now is uh, break this into, into pieces on the stack. So it's in real plus J imaginary. If I want those two numbers on the stack for additional or further manipulation, I just press the complex key, and now it puts the real and imaginary parts on the stack. And notice here, again, I don't have to guess which entry on the stack is the real part and which one's the imaginary part, because they're labeled. It says the top entry is real, the bottom entry is the imaginary part. So I could look at this now and write down those pieces. If I want magnitude and phase instead, I can just press complex again to put it back into a complex number, change the format to degrees, so it's polar format with degrees, and then push complex one more time, and then I see that I have a magnitude 
and a phase entry on the stack. I can see which entry is magnitude, which one is phase quite easily. I also see that the phase entry is in units of degrees. I don't have to guess about this. And now if you remember that program I wrote, that we wrote in the earlier video, if I don't want that degree tag on there anymore, for whatever reason, maybe that was supposed to be radians um, or something like this, for whatever reason, if I want to get rid of it, I can now use my F1 program and it will remove the tag. So it just takes a real number that's tagged and converts it back to a real number, if there's any reason I need to get rid of it. And if, I, if that was a mistake, I can always put the tag back on, put it back into degrees. So the reason I like that, for example, is if I did enter 30, because I'm on it degrees, but for some reason I pushed radians by accident and I wanted to enter degrees, um, one option would be to just delete this number and start over. But the option that I like better is that I can just remove the label that's radians, that was a mistake, and then press degrees to relabel it in degrees, which is what I intended. So that's another way to use that program. So I just press the double backspace right now to get rid of that entry on the stack. Again, I can press complex to put this back on the stack as a complex number. I could change it to radians and then break it apart again. So this is what I really like about the C47 calculator for manipulating complex numbers. Once I've set it up the way I like to use it, it has a lot of really nice features. Um, and I guess the best part about it is that I never have to guess what it just did. What does that entry mean? Is that magnitude first and then phase and radians? Um, or is it radians first and then magnitude? Um, is it radians or is it degrees? You know, there's no guessing. I always see the exactly what it's doing. So that's the end of this video um, showing how to manipulate complex numbers on the on the C47. This is the number one reason I really, really like this calculator. Um, these types of manipulations. Of course, you can do these manip manipulations on the older calculators. I did it on the HP 15C for years and years as I went through my um, engineering courses in college. Um, and then more recently, I've been using um, Plus 42 on my iPhone and um, Free 42 on my iPhone prior to that. And of course I bought the DM42 originally because it was running the Free42 software, um, which hands down Free42 is an outstanding solution. The DM42 calculator is an outstanding calculator running the Free42 software. I really like it, but um, this C47 implementation for handling complex numbers goes well beyond anything the HP15C could do, and it goes well beyond even what the HP42S does or the DM42. So this way of handling or working with complex numbers, it's hands down the best thing I've ever seen. So if you do a lot of complex number manipulations, um, you definitely wanna check out the C47 calculator. All right, in the next set of videos, I'm gonna do some problems that are on the internet, um, some example problems where uh, people show how to use the DM42 to do some calculations or show some shortcomings of the DM42. And I'll show how the C47 calculator addresses those problems in quite a nice way. So I'll see you in the next set of videos.